Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Horridon, 10 man normal in the Throne of Thunder. Hello. Yes, and this fight is really cool because it has a giant bloody rhino with like guns on the side. Well, she won. It's just a big nutcase fucking rhino that's escaped. Unfortunately, the, the fight itself is a bit shit, but it doesn't matter because there's a fucking rhino. Who gives a shit? It's good. Lovely. So for this encounter, you want to bring two tanks, two to three healers, um, and any DPS makeup. It doesn't matter too much. However, AoE and burst DPS is very, very good because there's quite a lot of adds you need to AoE down. Um, and the adds also need to be interrupt. So if you can bring interrupters as well, that also helps. Now the boss himself actually has very few abilities. It's all to do with ad management, really, this this fight until like the end. But um, we're going to go through each of the boss's abilities anyway, so you know what to do with them. Now the main ability the boss will cast is Triple Puncture, and this is only for your tanks to worry about. It will deal a high amount of physical damage, and it will also apply a debuff that increases the amount of damage that you take from this ability by 10%. And this debuff lasts for around 90 seconds. The only way you can deal with this is by taunting. However, we'll talk more about the taunting in a minute. Now the boss will also do something called double swipe. Now he'll periodically cast this move, and um, which creates like a shockwave style cone in front of him and behind him. And this will hit you for 300k, but twice, because it's double, double swipe. Double swipe yeah. yeah, lovely. And if you're in this cone, you, you're pretty much dead. So you just move out of it. You've got a lot of time, well, a fair amount of time, and cones aren't very big, so it's fairly simple. However, the boss also does something else called charge. Now this will focus on a random player and apply a debuff on you to show you that you have been focused. Now once the uh, debuff is gone he will charge at you which won't do any damage, it won't knock you back, nothing like that. But he will instantly cast double swipe on you but like of course after the cone effect. So it will just place a double swipe on you so you got to move out of it. Which means if you are in the raid and you haven't moved when you have been focused then there's just going to be a massive double swipe in the raid. Yeah. Which, which means better. when you are focused you just need to move out and ideally stand where the tanks are. Just move to on top of the tanks. Obviously not the tank that's dealing with the ads, but the main tank that's with the boss. This way the double swipe would just be in the same position that it would be otherwise. Now apart from this, there are like four doors around the outside of the room. Now each of these doors will open um, shortly after the last one has been destroyed, which we'll tell you how to do in a minute. And the first door will just open shortly as you enter the encounter. Now when you are by each door, you want to tank Horridon, um, because you'll have him of course with you. Um, so his side is facing the door sort of thing, so the raid will be by the door, and the boss will be at the side. This was means so they don't have to move for the um, double swipe, and of course you want to be tanking him fairly close, so if when the player does get charged, he can move to the tanks fairly easily, or at least place it in somewhere where it won't screw everyone over fairly easily. Also makes it easier for cleave damage and stuff like that. Now from each door, there is one set of elite ads, we're going to call them elite ads. Um, consisting of three ads in total and there's like one or two different minor ads that aren't really too important. Now the first door that opens is the Faraki door. From favorite. Fuck off door! And this is located to the closest on, well it's the closest door to you on the left hand side as you initially enter the room. Yeah, so it's, it's the first left. They're basically. all named anyway so it's not hard to find it. Now from this door you'll get two different minor ads um, spawning and you'll also get one elite ad. Now you get an ad called the Skirmisher. This does nothing apart from melee hit whoever's got threat on it, i.e. the tank who is tanking it. Hard mode! Just kill it. Yeah, Simple just it's really low DPS priority, just AoE it down with the rest of the shit that you're AoE and down. Um, otherwise you also get ads called Stone Gazers. Now these are crocodiles that um, also just hit on the tank, but they also have a cast called Stone Gaze. Now you kind of need to interrupt this cast, otherwise it will stun the tank for 10 seconds. However, you can dispel this, but if you have a couple of them up, then the dispels will be on cooldown and shit, and it's just a pain in the ass. So yeah, it's best if you can interrupt them, um, at least for this part. Now the elite mob that you get in this pack is Waste Walkers, and you will gain three of these mobs, one at the start and then two very shortly after. They have two abilities, one of them is a dot that you need to dispel, and another is, a, is that they spawn like a sand trap, and this sand trap will spawn under a random player and deal about 100k ticking damage and it will start to grow, you need to move out of it like immediately. And these adds are priority number one, they need to die as soon as you possibly can. And you should aim to kill this elite before the next two spawn. And then when you get these next two, you want to single target one down in particular, because one more ad will spawn called the Dinomancer. Now shortly after these two elite ads do spawn, as I said, the Dinomancer will spawn, and this was the case for every single door. So you'll get that one ad, then you get two ads, then you'll get the Dynamancer. One ad, two ad, Dynamancer for every single door. The Dynamancer will have a, a couple of abilities. One is a channeled hill on a, a Horridon. Now you just need to interrupt this. Um, it's very, very simple. Yeah. Now another one is that when it gets to 50% uh, HP, it will turn into a dinosaur, which is nice. And it will just make it do 50% uh, extra physical damage, but it can no longer cast the heal. 
So just nuke the living shit out of him. He's very, very important. The reason that he's so important to die is that he drops an orb of control. Now, basically, it's a big white ball on the ground that you can um, that you can click on, and when you do click on it, you'll start a 10-second channeled cast onto Horridon. Now, after the channel's finished, Horridon will go and smash his face into the door, and it will just destroy it, and that means that you've then finished that gate phase, making it so the ads associated with that door can no longer spawn anymore. He will also get stunned for 10 seconds and gains a permanent 50% damage taken increase for the rest of the encounter. And this does stack on a door by door basis. So after he has smashed his face into all four doors, that's a 200% damage increase. You should then start moving clockwise after you've finished this door uh, towards the next door, so the next one on the left. And this is also where you want to do your tank swap. Ideally, you want to do your tank swap after every single door because this is probably the right amount of stacks of triple puncture. However, if you're very slow with the doors, then you might need to like tank swap earlier. But this also means that the ads are going to be a little bit more problematic and the ads might be on the tank who's actually tanking the boss as well, making it more difficult for DPS, especially melee, to get at these ads. So we really do recommend that you do only tank swap when you're changing from door to door. And of course, while you're moving to the next door, it does take a little bit, um, a little while to spawn. You should just finish off any ads that are left over. As soon as that orb spawns, you want to click on it straight away, and there should be an elite left, like I don't know, about 70, 50% health or something. Just finish it off there. Now, the second door you go to is the Garabashi door, which is lovely. All the arena and the gnome times there. But um, this door spawns two different ads. It spawns Blood Trolls and the Venom Priest. Now, the Blood Trolls are the minor ad for this door, and they just randomly charge people and put a dot on them. Otherwise, they just hit the tanks. It's, it's a very small dot, and it doesn't really do much. You don't really need to worry about them. You should really worry about the Venom Priests. They are the elites for this door, and yeah, the Venom Priests need to be focused down first. They have a Venom Bolt Volley that puts a poison dot on everyone for one minute, dealing 10k damage every three seconds, which isn't a lot. However, it stacks. Um, so it's worth dispelling it if you can. But obviously, because it is poison, it's kind of a pain in ass to dispel. You can't mass dispel it, and everyone will have it. So you might even want to work out some sort of system where you can dispel it, like from each person. Really, you want to prioritize the people with the highest stacks to dispel. They can also summon a venomous effusion, uh, and these will also do venom bolt volleys. But when they spawn, they create a pool underneath them that wanders around slowly. So if you stand in it, it takes it does a shitload of damage. Yeah. Just don't stand in these pools. Um, they're very easy to avoid. Now, once again, you should try and kill the first elite before the second two spawn, and then another elite before the Dynamancer once again spawns. Then you want to kill the Dynamancer, use the orb, smash Hor Horridan's face into the uh, gate, finish off that last elite and any other ads as you move over towards the next door, which is the Drakari door. Now, there are three different ads at this door, two minor ads and one elite ad again. Now, the two minor shitty ads are the Warriors and the Champions, and they do the exact same thing, just like melee hits, but just a little harder than perhaps the other ones. They also have a disease debuff that they apply to players that ticks for around 20k, and this disease lasts for five minutes, um, so you wanted to dispel this as well. They can also go crazy and start focusing on ra random players, but it's not really a big deal. You don't need to worry about these ads too much. Now the ads you do need to worry about, the elite ads that you're going to get, are the Frozen Warlords. Now these have a Mortal Strike ability that will of course be cast on the tank because the tank will be picking them up. This will make um, them take 50% reduced healing for 8 seconds and it does hit hard so make sure you do watch your tank. Now they also summon a Frost Orb on the ground. Now if you stand near this it slows you and hits you really hard so don't stand near it. And once again you want to kill one before the next two spawn, then kill one of them before the Dynamancer spawns and kill the Dynamancer, use the orb, Horridan's face into the wall, then move over towards the next platform which you finish off the ads and the next gate is the Armani door. Now for this door there are also two minor ads and elite ad again. <laughs> there are the protectors that just melee hits on the tanks, shitty ads, not important. And they're the flame casters, they cast fire bolts at random players. Uh, and th this can actually be interrupted, so you should try and interrupt it, but it's not really a big deal. Now the elite ads on this door are the war bears, which is amazing, um, and they are mounted by bee shamans. Now once you kill the bear, the shaman will spawn. Now the war bear itself um, just does a swipe in front of him, dealing about 100k damage to anyone within 5 yards, so just make sure you don't face it when you're tanking it towards the raid. Now once the bear does die, as I said, the shaman does spawn and has several abilities. The shaman has an interruptible chain lightning that jumps um, up to 5 yards and up to 3 times and it increases the damage dealt uh, by 50% per jump, so either spread out for 5 yards or interrupt, or both, you should try to do both. 
They also place a curse on a random player called Hex of Confusion. This lasts for 30 seconds, and this gives the player a 50% chance to do 50k damage to themselves whenever they use an ability. Do try and dispel this, I know it's a curse, and not everyone can dispel that, but yeah, dispelling this it really does help. And they also spawn a Lightning Nova Totem, which deals 200k damage every 3 seconds to anyone within 8 yards of the totem. Um, you need to just move from this totem, there's nothing else you can really do about it. Now once again, you just kill the, the first elite before the second two appear, and then you want to kill the last Dynomancer, the boss will smash his head into the wall, finish off any minor ads, and then you'll move into the last phase. Now in this last phase you want to move uh, Horridon into the middle of the room and then just start nuking him and he will just do nothing it dif different. He just does all. what he already does except he's a bit crazy. Yeah, he's just a bit a bit crazy. But um, once Horridon does hit 30%, one last ad will spawn. There's only one ad, don't worry, and his name is War God Jalak, I think. And his name, he will, <laughs> <laughs> it's such ridiculous, but he will jump down. Now he will need to be tanked and he only has one ability called Bestial Cry. This does 100k physical damage to everyone, but this does increase the damage he deals by 50% and it stacks. So every time he casts it, he does more and more damage. Also when he dies, um, Horridon gains a 50% damage and attack speed buff. Now you can either nuke Horridon and ignore Jalak, just have him out on the side, just with the tank on him. Um, but Jalak will eventually start dealing more and more damage. So you and Jalak to... himself doesn't have a lot of health. No. So you can just you can do one way or the other. But if you do just kill Jalak, then Horridon will be hitting your tanks very very hard. Yeah. So it, it's sort of a balance in that. And once he, once Horridon does sort of go into this like mini enraged tanks, you really want to use your cooldowns. And apart from that. That's pretty much the fight. It's just all to do with just controlling control. the doors. Yeah. yeah, and then at the last phase, it, we recommend that you kill Jalak, but of course you don't have to. Um, and yeah, it's very very simple. It shouldn't take you very long, especially on normal mode. So yeah, good good. So thanks for watching. If this guide did help you out, drop us a like, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.